Hi, I'm Stuart from Ring Jewelers, and in this film we're going to look at the way diamonds are graded. We hear a lot about the four C's, but not many people actually tell you what that means in real terms when you're buying a diamond. So we're going to look at the different sort of characteristics today. So starting first of all with the carat of a diamond. Carat is actually um, a weight measurement, so a lot of people mistake it for size, but it's actually the weight of the diamond, and one carat is 0.2 of a gram. Um, if we look at this little model of stones here, it shows us different diamond weights. So the smallest one there is 0.1 of a carat. Then we've got 0.15, 0.2 of a carat. That's the sort of weight that we start seeing engagement rings being made at that sort of size. And then you've got 0.25 or a quarter carat in other words, third of a carat, half a carat, three quarters of a carat, going up to a one carat diamond. Now that as you can see, a lot of people think one carat is almost like a starting point. But that's actually quite a large stone. So that's the carrot of a diamond. The word carrot actually came from carob seeds because people used to weigh seeds up against their gemstones and the word carob became carrot. And that's how we get the carrot weight measurement for diamonds. So next we're going to look at the colour of a diamond and how the colour grade affects a stone. So if we have a look on here. Colour is graded alphabetically. Um, there's no A, B, C. It just starts at D. So D is the perfect colour for a diamond. And as you go into the alphabet, the diamonds get more and more of a yellowy brown colour. Now, what's really important is everybody tells you this scale, but they don't really explain what that means in real terms. And the thing to remember, it's an incredibly subtle step between each colour grade. You'll only really see the colour creeping in, even if you've got a really keen eye, around about a sort of I or a J colour. You just get a slight yellow hue to the stone. Um, above that, if you say H or above, you get a really, really nice white diamond. So that's quite important because Lots of people have heard about this scale, but they don't know really what it means in real terms. So it doesn't mean that, say, an H colour or a G colour is a bad grade stone. It will still look really, really nice and white. So that's the, the colour grade of diamonds. Clarity in diamonds will range from a flawless diamond, where there's no inclusions at all under a times 10 magnification, right down to I3, where the inclusions get very obvious to the naked eye. So you don't need any sort of jeweler's lube, any tools to see it. You'll just be wearing the ring. Um, and you'll see little black flecks in the stone or sometimes they're little white marks known as feathers um, and you'll spot them with the naked eye. So that's quite obvious at that stage. The thing to bear in mind though, although again a lot of people have heard of this scale, is how subtle each step is between the sort of stages of the clarity. And it's really only those bottom three, the I1, the I2 and the I3, that you'll see with the naked eye. Sometimes if it's a very, very big stone, way over a carat, you might just about spot an SI2 inclusion, but generally speaking, anything SI2 and above, you need a jeweler's loop to see it. So we start with a flawless diamond there, and then we have VVS1 and VVS2. They refer to very, very slightly included diamonds, and they're incredibly tiny, even through high magnification. After this, we've got VS1 and VS2, and that just refers to very slight. Um, and then after that, we've got the slightly included, so SI1 and SI2. Um, the included diamonds, as I say, that's where it gets very obvious, but really stay above there and you've got a lovely diamond. It doesn't mean that an SI1 is a, a poor grade. You won't be seeing any inclusions with a naked eye. So again, still a really nice stone. So again, that's flawless. The VS, VVS inclusions, the VS, SI, and then down to I, one, two, and three. And that's the clarity of a diamond. So next we're going to talk about the cut of a diamond and that actually refers to two different things. It's how well the stone's been cut and polished, but also it's often the shape of a diamond will be referred to as the cut as well. So if we look at this chart here, you'll see that there's a, a quite a descriptive sort of grading term for, for how well a stone's been cut and polished. Um, you'll have excellent, which is the perfect cut, polish or symmetry, um, very good, and that's followed by good, then fair, and then pour. Now, what this refers to is you could have a, a diamond that's a, a superb piece of material, it could be a D-flawless diamond, but if it's not been cut or polished very well, then that can affect the light refraction. So you'll see on a laboratory certificate one of these grades here, and they sound really descriptive, nothing technical, um, but it will just range from the perfect excellent right down to a poorly cut stone. Um, the other version of cut, as I say, is, is the shape of a diamond often referred to as the cut. And this box here um, 
shows some of the, the cuts of diamond that you can get. There's actually lots more than this, but these are the most popular cuts. Um, we have a round, brilliant cut diamond, and that's probably the most popular cut of diamond that we use. So lots of facets underneath the stone and on top as well, and that's probably the most popular cut of diamond for both engagement rings and wedding rings alike. Um, next we have a marquee cut, so a kind of elliptical cut, an oval diamond. You see those quite often with little clusters of stones around them or sometimes a, a round stone either side. Then we have um, emerald and baguette cut, very similar cut of stone. Um, the emerald cut just has little chamfered corners there. They give jewellery a really nice sort of art deco appearance because of the geometry you see in the stone. Not the most sort of fiery of stones because they're quite a simple cut. It's almost like looking down a flight of steps when you look into a, an emerald cut diamond. Um, but that's an emerald cut. Trillions you tend to just see very small ones either side of another shape of diamond. So you don't see those so much in an engagement ring. Um, heart shaped stones. Princess cut, they're another really popular cut of diamond. So nice and square. Again, lots of facets underneath like the round brilliant cuts have as well. And then last of all, a pear cut diamond. So that's a, a pear cut stone. So that's a bit about diamond grading. Um, but what's really, really important is that you buy a diamond that's been independently laboratory graded. Um, many shops will give you a, a rough estimate of a grade, like they'll start mentioning two or three colour grades, for example. Um, and that's really a licence to sell you an inferior quality stone that could be worth a lot less, really. So at Ring Jewellers, we tend to use um, GIA laboratory graded diamonds. They produce a report after the, the diamond's been graded loose. That gets passed on to the customer when they buy a diamond from us. So the GIA laboratory reports, um, they have lots of detail, everything we've spoken about already. So the cut, colour and clarity. Um, and there's also things on here like the fluorescence of a diamond. So fluorescence in a diamond is a bad thing, that will make the stone look milky, even if it's a really high grade. If we have a look on the chart here again, um, that's an example of fluorescence. So under a UV light, um, the stronger fluorescence, the more the diamond wants to almost sort of glow. Um, but when you do get to these sort of strong um, or very strong fluorescence, even in normal daylight, you'll see the stone starts to look a little bit milky, almost like it needs a bit of a polish. Um, but it's, it's obviously not dirt, it's just a characteristic of the stone. So fluorescence in a diamond is a bad thing. Um, the ideal fluorescence will be none at all. And that's, for example, this diamond laboratory report here. This diamond that we've actually got in front of us here has no fluorescence at all. And that's another thing that's not mentioned that much in, in jewellery shops as well. Um, they talk about the four C's, but that, that's quite important too. So that's a laboratory report. And then just to show how that affects things um, in a real stone, um, that report is actually for this diamond here. And this diamond is 0.9 of a carat. It's an H colour and it's an SI2 clarity. So it just shows in real terms what a lot of those characteristics translate to. If we look back at the chart here, what all that means again, to refresh our memory, the colour grade of this diamond is an H. So it's not the perfect D colour, but you shouldn't see any real obvious yellow in there. It'll be quite a subtle difference. So that's an H colour diamond. Then the clarity, which remember is the inclusions in the stone. Um, this is an SI2. So again, not the top flawless clarity, but there shouldn't be anything that you could see with the naked eye. So there's slight inclusions, hence the SI reference. Um, weight wise, this is a, a 0.9 carat diamond. So just under a carat, um, and as I say, that's purely a weight measurement and that's really personal whether you want to go for a, a slightly smaller stone or a larger diamond. So that's a 0.9 HSI2 that's been GI laboratory graded, and as we say, that's the report for that actual diamond. And that's what we do at Ring Jewelers. Rather than a, a rough estimate, it will be a laboratory graded stone if you were to buy an engagement ring from us. So that's how we do things at Ring Jewelers. Any diamond over about a quarter of a carat um, will be laboratory certificated and you'll get a, a diamond certificate with the ring. Um, if you want to have a look at our rings, we've always got a great selection in stock. Um, we're based at 21 Meeting House Lane in Brighton. We can have a look at a lot of designs we've made at ringjewellery.co.uk.